Good morning, everyone. Your morning doesn't sound so good. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Okay. We had a wonderful breakfast. The good morning should be like... Yeah, you know, it's not the tofu, it's the rice. <laughs> when I saw the rice this morning, it just brought so much joy to my life. <laughs> God is good, amen? He knows what our needs are, and He always provides it at the right time, <laughs> in the right way, with the perfect tofu on the side. <laughs> God has been so good, and uh, it has been a week of blessing for me here. I have been blessed uh, by seeing how many people are so in love with the Lord, are so passionate to, to seek after His face, and uh, that is the place that I want to be, to be in. God is good, amen? So this morning, before we go on with our, with our talk, I'd like to request once again, brothers and sisters who are able to kneel down, to please kneel down with me for a word of prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for every good gift that you have given us. For you have been such a generous, loving, and a caring Father. Lord, we praise you and thank you for the things that uh, we sometimes neglect to thank you for. Thank you, Lord, for providing us uh, three wonderful, healthy meals every day. And this morning, Lord, I just thank you for the rice. Thank you, Lord, for, for the little things that sometimes we neglect. We just give you back all the praises, the glory, and the honor. And dear Father, I pray that as we share, as I share what you have done, Father, I ask that you please take me out of the way that I may not be seen, but Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up, and exalted. We give you the highest praise, for you deserve it. Thank you so much, Lord. And dear Father, I pray that you please anoint us with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Prepare our hearts, Lord, for what we're about to receive today. For we ask this in the loving name of your son Jesus, all your children say, Amen. Amen. So when, when we hear about the story of Jehoshaphat and how the Lord led him, those crazy adventures, the question is, how can we apply that in our lives today? Do we really take God at his word that he will show us the way? Do we really take God at his word, that we follow his command, even though it looks foolishness in the sight of men? Huh? Sometimes we are like Jehoshaphat. We're afraid of losing face, that we don't want to follow what God has given because God's ways are so simple. God's ways seem so foolish in the sight of men that we that we take so much care of preserving our image, saving our face, and really following God. And I remember, I remember, uh, I was just sharing this a couple of months ago, within this couple of months, and, uh, and people were asking me, so Jem, how do you strike a balance about living responsibly and living by faith? And I'm thinking, wow, such a good question. And at the back of my mind, so is living by faith not living responsibly? Huh? And then my answer, I did not say that the, the things that are running in my head, but I said to the person, you know what, the only way to live, to live responsibly is to live by faith. Amen. Amen? That is the only way to live responsibly because sometimes we think that we are living responsibly or making decisions responsibly but we're making it logically, but not really responsibly if it's not living by faith or deciding by faith. Can you say amen to that? Because the only way who knows everything is, is God. And, and I'd like to share some, some experiences that, uh, that happened to me a uh, couple of years, or like three years ago, and God was somehow testing me. How far would I, <laughs> would I follow him? and this foolishness that people will say, living by faith. <laughs> so one particular time, I was heading back to the Philippines, and uh, Facebook could be a blessing and a curse sometimes. 
So I posted that I'm going back home. So when my friends saw that I'm coming back home, I'm, I'm thinking that I need a few days or a few weeks to rest. When my friends saw, oh, Brother Jem, can you come to our, to our school? This, there's this school back in the Philippines. It's, uh, I guess, our only university, Adventist University. It's called Adventist University of the Philippines, AUP. So I have a lot of friends there. I did not graduate, by the way, in our institution. The only 70 Adventist uh, education I had was elementary. And uh, high school, I was in a government school. And, and college, I was in a Baptist university. I didn't want to leave our hometown, so I stayed there. So what happened was, when they, they gave me a call, and I said, Brother Jem, can you speak at our dentistry, dentistry uh, special Sabbath? And I said, okay, since I'm going to, to Manila anyway. And I said, okay. So they booked it. And friends, two days before my flight, because I'm going to that place a week before, if, before that event, because I have to process some visas. And then they said, oh, Brother Jem, uh, there is a slight change in the, in the plans. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll not, I'll not be speaking anymore. I'm thinking, I could finally breathe. And I said, there's a slight change. It's not going to be a special Sabbath. And I said, so what's, what's it going to be? And they said, it's going to be a week of prayer. And I said, it's not a slight change. It's a major change. <laughs> and they even have, they even have like a, a theme already prepared. And I said, can we change the theme? And they said, what theme would you suggest? And I said, can we make it absolute reliance? That's actually the, the start of absolute reliance. And then they said, why absolute reliance? And I told them, because I have to absolutely rely on the Lord for everything. I don't have a message to share with you. <laughs> friends, the moment I arrived there, and these friends, oh, they know how to maximize your time. <laughs> he said, so, Brother Jim, by the way, we booked you. <laughs> they just informed you they did not ask permission. <laughs> We booked you for a morning devotional every single morning to the dorms. You know what time is their morning devotional? 5 a.m. So it's 5 a.m. And so this first morning devotional that I went to, and by the way, they also booked me to do like short devotionals in the dentistry classes, like four classes in the morning and like two classes in the afternoon. So I did not even have time to prepare much. So I have to really rely on the Lord for everything. So I have to wake up way, way earlier to somehow spend time with God. And this particular morning, when I was going to the chapel, to the worship hall, I saw, I saw ladies, they, this are girls' dorm, I saw ladies that are just dragging their body to the worship hall. They're like zombies, friends. <laughs> The spirit, I don't know if the spirit was willing and the body was resisting, so <laughs> they just went. And, and the, the opening song that they sang was this song, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Friends, there's no sweetness in their faces and in their voice while they're singing this song. It's like, "'Tis so sweet." They're all like, they're, they're all like dying outside and inside. <laughs> but guess, what? For the first time, that song hit me like no other time. I, I sang that song maybe a thousand times more than I, I heard that. For the very first time, it hit me. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Friends, come to think of it. Life would be sweeter if we trust Him fully. Amen? Whatever the situations that you're facing, all you have to do is, what does saith the Lord? Whatever problems that you have, what does saith the Lord? If you trust Him, if you trust Jesus, life would be sweeter. Amen? Okay, 13, agreed. Friends, I assure you, life would be sweeter. Life would really be sweeter. I will, there was one particular time that I was, I was tested, really tested. 2015, this, this was GC session, and I was asked to, to be part of the GC prayer team. And uh, remember I told you about the bed blogs? 
that, that started during that time, there's another thing that the Lord has taught me in that, in that trip as well. In that trip, in that four month that, that I was scheduled to be in the US, I arrived last week of June and then I have to go back to, to the Philippines last week of October. And this is the challenge. The only appointments that I had was GC session in July and GC annual council in October. In between, I don't have a schedule. Two years before, I came to the U.S. and somehow I experienced how challenging life in the U.S. is and how expensive life in the U.S. is compared to the third world. So friends, when I was invited to come back and I'm thinking, wow, almost three months that I'll be vacant, what am I gonna do? So all these ideas were coming in my head. Should I do like babysit my friend's kids? <laughs> Should I house it, my cousin's house? And all these ideas are coming to my head, but I did not have peace. Friends, if you don't have peace, it's not, it's not your idea. It's not God's idea. It's your idea. So friends, I was praying and praying and praying. I said, Lord, please tell me what to do. I don't have any, I don't have any invitations. I don't have any schedule. And friends, the Lord was silent. And I was crying, I was pleading before him. Have you had that experience? You were asking for an answer and there's no answer? There's like this dark clouds, it's like your, your prayers are just not even reaching the ceiling. Mine is reaching the ceiling, I'm a loud prayer. So it's just like there's no answer and I'm thinking what is happening? Friends, I learned that when God is silent, especially in my situation, it's because I've talked too much. And the Lord gave me this verse, Psalms 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. You are not God. <laughs> the situation is not God. I am God. So I, I was trying to be still, my dear friends, but my heart was racing 100 miles per hour. <laughs> I'm thinking, Lord, please let me know what, what you're going to do. And friends, God is... God is just an awesome God that he would not give in sometimes to our prayer requests until we learn the lesson. So I stood still and I said, okay, Lord, please. I don't know how to be still, so please calm my heart down. So I, the Lord calmed my heart down. And one particular time, I, I was having this, this wonderful devotions with God and I was just asking, Lord, is my heart still enough? to hear your answer. I just want to know, even just one appointment, Lord, even just one appointment, please give me peace. Where do you want me to go? Just so that I know that your hand is in this trip. Friends, while I was praying, the Lord somehow convicted me, just wait until your prayer seminar is ended. Friends, I was asked to speak in one of the prayer seminars during the general conference session. And a prayer seminar is not, is not a plenary. It's just like little workshops that are happening during the session. And the prayer seminars are scheduled lunchtime and dinner time. And they invited speakers, Seventh-day Adventist speakers. And I'm thinking, who's going to attend my seminar? No one knows me. The speakers were Ruthie Jacobson, Ivor Myers. Uh, Melody Mason, and there's this little Filipino guy, Jem Castor, who is he? And I'm thinking, Lord, who's gonna attend my spare seminar? And these doubts are running in my head. And friends, and the prayer seminar was scheduled on the time where they were discussing the most crucial topic in our church. And friends, and I'm thinking, even Boots closed their boots, the exhibits, just to attend the session. I'm thinking, <laughs> I hope that the audio operator will not forget that he has a duty. Because the promise is where two or three are gathered. <laughs> Even just the two of us. And friends, such unbelief in my head. When I, when I arrived in the prayer seminar, there were, I guess, more than 100 people who were there. And I'm thinking, the doubts in my head, like, these people are lost. <laughs> They're thinking about another seminar and they'll discover it's, it's, it's a different seminar. They'll leave. Friends, I was already standing and I'm, I was imagining in five minutes they will realize that it's a different speaker. They will leave. Such unbelief, huh? And friends, they stayed. And after everything was done, every, after everything was done, 
they came forward and they asked for my number, they asked for my email, and one after another asked me, Jem, can you speak in our church? Jem, can you share this in our conference? Jem, can you do a weekend revival? Jem, can you have a week of prayer? My schedule got filled up. One person asked me, hey, can you go to India? And the other said, can you go to Africa? They said, hey, speak to us in Romania. I said, slow down. <laughs> Friends, when the Lord says so, it will be so. Amen? I was blown away. And my almost three-month vacant schedule got filled up. And the sad thing is, weeks or months before that, the Lord has already taught me a lesson. Remember that, that story that I told you? When I surrendered it to the Lord, the Lord filled up the three months. When I surrendered it to the Lord, the Lord filled up the six months. Now a similar situation on a different location happened and my doubts begin to set in. I was thinking, you did that in Asia, you might not be able to do it in America. We limit the power of our God. And one of those, one of those people who came forward is someone from, someone from, uh, from Florida. And this person asked me, hey, Brother Jem, I just want to ask if you have an invitation to go to Florida. And I said, uh, let me check. I'm sorry I don't have. I said, why? why? Do you have an invitation for me to go to Florida? But the problem is it's already filled up. And then she said, no, 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 no. What I'm trying to do is give you an R&R. Yeah, because you know what? We know, we know that missionaries are quite tired most of the time. So what we want, I want you to have like, like this time to be laid back and all. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I'm here for missions, not for vacation. Don't get me wrong, friends. I love vacations. <laughs> but the moment I tasted missions, vacation looked boring. Huh? Vacation seemed boring. I'm the kind of guy who loves fun. I don't have to explain it. You could see it. But vacation became boring. Like Philippines has a lot of beautiful beaches, a lot, a lot of beautiful places. And when I go back, my family would always make an effort to, okay, Jam, let's go, let's have vacation. Like, yeah, we were there. We were there looking at beaches. But after an hour or two, begin to ask yourself, why am I here? <laughs> What's like the sense of, of being here and not, not doing missions? So going back there, I, told, I did not tell the lady I want missions, not vacation. I told her, you know what, I'm not, I don't have any invitations to be there, but if I have, then I will let you know. And friends, so she said, okay, I'll give you my email, contact me, I'll give you my number. So we exchanged numbers. And while I was going around in those weeks, those months, earlier that month, when I went to this church, the church pastor said, Brother Jem, this, this Sabbath is not enough. We need a weekend revival. And I told him, I'm sorry, but the whole three months are booked. And then he said, can you cancel one of those weekends that you may come to us? And I told him, oh, we'll see. I'll pray about it. So I looked at those people who invited me, and I saw the one that's, that's, uh, that's the nicest one. <laughs> and I asked that person, can we cancel this? And the moment I come back to the US, I'll, I'll somehow go back to your church. And the person reluctantly said, yes. And so I give that, uh, I give that schedule to that pastor. This is, fun. this is one of the crazy things that happened. Two days before my flight, the pastor called me up. Brother Jem, I'm so sorry. We did not realize that the schedule of our of your revival here is also the schedule of like a district event. So I'm so sorry we have to cancel out on you. Friends already have a ticket. <laughs> and I was just like thinking, okay, but at the back of my mind, why? <laughs> I was not a happy little missionary during the time. I was just like thinking, Lord, I have to cancel out a revival just to accommodate this. And now this is just very irresponsible. I was complaining and my head was about to explode. And then somehow the Lord gave me that verse again. Be still and know that I am God. I'm the one in charge, not you are, not the situation, not the pastor. I am. So I knelt down and I said, Lord, please forgive me. Sometimes, friends, 
it's so easy to forget that we are not the one in charge. Huh? It's not people who are in charge, it's God. So I, I surrendered that to the Lord. I knelt before God. I asked forgiveness. I repented from, from what I have just said. And then the Lord gave me that peace. Guess what? A few hours later, I received this phone call. The phone call went like this. Brother Jem, I'm sorry to call you and to ask you. This is quite, this is quite a late invitation, but would you happen to be available this weekend? <laughs> and I told the person, actually, my weekend just cleared up. Well, what is your plan? Can you speak? Guess where? Orlando, Florida. <laughs> So I contacted the person right away, I said, and I said to the person, yes, I am available. I contacted the person right away, rerouted my ticket, and, and the person on the other end said, okay, Jem, I, have, I will prepare your room, your place here in, in Orlando, France. While my friend and I were driving to that place, I forgot all her instructions when I saw the place. My jaw just dropped. My friend forgot the instruction as well. That was actually the biggest timeshare resort in the U.S. For those of you who do not know what timeshare is, timeshare is like you buy into to that resort or something and you get like a free like two weeks or a month depending on your investment in that, uh, in that place. So that was the biggest timeshare resort. So they brought me, my friend brought me to, to the clubhouse where we will register. And friends, while we were at the clubhouse, the lady who was trying to to book my ticket in, uh, my, my name in, oh, to register my name. She was trying to look for, for my reservation and she could not find it. I'm thinking, oh man, this is a problem. She could not find it. And then later on she said, oh, sir, you're not here in the regular registration. You have to go to the elite office. You are in elite booking. I'm thinking, I'm elite. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in. And friends, when I was there, my, there's a snack prepared for me. There's an elite snack. There's an elite towel. And I drink my elite juice. <laughs> it's so cool. So after that, after that I was led to my, to my room. My room, my dear friends, my bed. That's the biggest bed I've seen. Friends, I don't need a big bed. I'm a small guy. I could fit in a rug. This is a, and I'm thinking, Lord, I'll even get lost in this bed. <laughs> and when I, when I opened the door, I was checking, I was trying to check the bathroom. When I opened the bathroom, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is like this, this room that are adjacent. The, this are, there are rooms that like uh, open to the next room. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe the, the guest on the other end forgot to, to lock the room. So I went in and said, hello, good morning, hello. <laughs> Friends, later on, I found out that's still part of my room. I have a huge room. I had my own kitchen. I had my own dining room. I had my own living room that folds out into a bed. And when I, when I opened my bathroom, I, I have not seen the biggest bathtub in my life until that. So I sat down in the bathtub and said, I could still fit three little Filipinos here. <laughs> I said, I could do backstroke in this bathtub. And I said, Lord, this is not a mission. This is vacation. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. <laughs> and this is one thing, friends. I've never tasted the type of life until I became a missionary. This is not a prosperity gospel. I'm not telling you to be a missionary to, to taste five-star accommodation. <laughs> It's not happening every day. So, but God is so good that he will give us a taste of that just to prove to us, I'm taking care of you. Amen? So while I was there, friends, I've learned something here in, in the first world, in the U.S. Even if you're living in luxury, living in five-star, four-star hotel, breakfast is not assured. And I'm thinking, oh, Yes, I'm living a luxurious life here, but I might die in hunger. There's only two allergies I have. It's peanuts and hunger. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking I might die in hunger here. So friends, I, I remember that coming in, going into that resort, there are some stores on the side. It's like a mile away, and there was Target. 
So I'm thinking, okay, I'll go to Target. So I walked to Target. I walked going to Target, and friends, this is highway. And all the while I thought it's still Philippines. So I was walking along the road, and all of a sudden, and I was going with the traffic, not against the traffic, so I do not see the traffic. While I was walking, all of a sudden, all of a sudden there's this huge truck that passed by. It's like my soul left my body. <laughs> The truck was so strong that I got nearly like blown to the side. So I was, I was walking and thinking, oh Lord, this is a dangerous spot here. So I walked inside the gutter. And later on, I called my friends. Hey, guess what? I walked to Target and they got nearly hit by a truck. And I said, Jem, we know that you're crazy, but we could not imagine that you're that crazy. You could have been killed. And I said, I know. <laughs> friends, when I went... And I went to Target, and I went back. I, I, I learned my lesson, go the opposite way. And when I reached there, when I reached the clubhouse with all my stuff, I just learned that they have a shuttle, a free shuttle, <laughs> that will bring you from, from my end of the resort to the, to the last end of the resort, where you could just cross the road, and there's Target. And I'm thinking, oh, I risked my life for nothing. So the next day, and by the way, this resort is like a two-mile resort. This is huge. So I went to this, to this place with, the, with that uh, shuttle. And uh, one, I went back. And this is September. This is summer. And the heat, in the height of summer, Florida heat. So I was carrying my bags. This time I brought more because I thought that I'll be, I'll be riding the shuttle. But I was waiting for that drop-off point, for that check, checkpoint, and I was waiting like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, no shuttle. So I asked the guard, excuse me, sir, what time does a shuttle pass by? And the guard said, uh, I'm sorry, sir, this is not, a, not the regular route of the shuttle. So what do you mean? They dropped me off here. And I said, yeah, they dropped you off because you requested, but that, this is not the regular route. And I asked, so where is the regular drop-off and pick-up? And I said, oh, it's in the River Island. It's like 800 meters from here. I'm thinking, nearly a kilometer? And I said, I'm too tired and too sweaty. I'm too lazy to go another kilometer. Friends, I was too tired and I was quite dehydrated. I'm thinking, Lord, oh, please help me. And the Lord promised. There's this beautiful verse, Psalms 32, verse 8. I will what? I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with what? With mine eye. And as I said, Lord, I'll take this, this promise literally like right now. I need your instruction. I need your guidance. Friends, look at this situation. If God is the one instructing us and teaching us where to go, will you ever get lost? No. Will you ever regret the journey? And sometimes we think that we know better. But who among you here knows what's going to happen tomorrow? No one. How about five minutes from now? No one. How about two minutes from now? No one. Only God knows. God is the one who only knew that I'm going to do this. <laughs> only He knows. So isn't it wise? Isn't it an intelligent choice? To somehow accept the offer of God that he says, I will what? I will instruct, I will teach, and I will guide. Why do we go on living without his instruction, without his teaching, without his guidance, when he offers it to us? The God who owns the universe, the God who spoke and all this world came into existence, the stars, the massive stars that we talk about, this is the God who's planning, who's trying to invite you, I will instruct, I will teach, I will guide. Friends, if God is the one guiding us, we'll never get lost. GPS and Siri get you lost sometimes. Huh? Google Maps somehow is wacky sometimes, but God will never get you lost. Isn't it wise to somehow take that offer? So, that's what happened, and I was praying, Lord, please let me know what do you want me to do? And then there was this, there was this still small voice, hitchhike, and I'm thinking, 
Is that your instruction, Lord? Hitchhike? <laughs> really? And I'm thinking, I've watched a lot of movies before, and hitchhiking doesn't end well. <laughs> so friends, I was just thinking, but hitchhiking, going inside the resort is safer, isn't it? Not going outside of the resort. So and since I'll just be going to like 700 meters from where I am, I am like at 800 meters. And I, I said, okay, I'll do that then. So the first person that gave me a ride, and they said, oh, this is cool, this is okay. So the moment the person dropped me off, before he dropped me off, the Lord convicted me, pray for that person. And friends, here in the U.S., it's not just easy to pray for people, isn't it? Huh? Sometimes you might offend them because not all are Christians. And this is such like a culture shock to me when I, when I went to Amazing Facts because one of our, our tasks is to do door knocking. And I could not believe that there's a lot of people who does not believe in God here. Because back home, when you don't believe in God, you're like weird. Here, there's just like door after door that was slammed in my face. Like, get out, we don't need you. And there was even one time, okay. <laughs> and it offends people when you talk about God. So now the Lord is asking me to pray for these people. And you know what? When the Lord has prepared the heart, we don't have to be afraid of anything. And these people are so blessed. Even just with just like two minute ride, one minute ride, and then before they drop me off, I just tell them, you know what, I'm just so thankful that God provided you as my angel today. Can I, can I pray for a blessing for you? And these people were said, wow, this is, this is just awesome, so thank you. So friends, that day, even though I don't have anything to buy in Target, I went back again, get the shuttle, get dropped off, and now I have a glow. <laughs> And I said, this is missions after all. So I have the hitchhike ministry. So I kept on doing it. And the last day, I said to the Lord, Lord, this is the last day. So I want, I want an awesome mission. I want a good one. So while, this, while this, uh, this vehicle was coming forward, I saw that the one who's driving is a lady. And friends, most of, most of the people that I rode with, are, are men and women that look like men. So, and I'm thinking, this is gonna be weird. This is gonna be weird. This is, this is a lady. And then, so I'm thinking, Lord, are you sure that uh, this is the right one? And the Lord just confirmed, okay. So I said to her, excuse me, miss. And I said, yes. Can I hitch a ride just like 800 meters from here? At and it's uh, in the River Island. I just need to catch a shat shuttle there. And she said, oh, she was hesitating. Of course, even I'm a little man, I'm, I'm still a man. So, and she said, oh, okay, get in. The moment I got in, the moment I got in, she called the guard. He said, excuse me, can you, can you come here? And the guard came and she said to the guard, I just want you to know, if something happens to me, just remember who I'm with. <laughs> So after she said that, I said to the guard, excuse me, if something happens to me too, just remember who I'm with. <laughs> A dose of her own medicine. <laughs> so while she was driving, while she was driving, that, that, that was like our icebreaker. And while she was driving, I told her, you know what? God will surely bless you because you have been so good to, to his missionary. And then she heard the word missionary and she drove slower. I said, oh, you're a missionary. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's like in my head, ding, 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 testimony time. But this is just a very short ride. And friends, I have like a one minute uh, version. I have five minutes version. I have 30 minutes version. I have one day version of, mission, of, of story. So I gave her my one minute version, but she drove slower. This is... a. Uh, a 10 mile per hour was this uh, speed limit, and she drove like five miles or even three at some point. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, and this one minute became like five minutes. And now it's time for me to be dropped off. I ended the, the, the story, I ended the testimony, and I said, oh, miss, you could drop me off here. I said, no, 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 I'll bring you to your place because when we were talking, I found out where she, she stays. She stays in the north, I stay in the south. 
is the exact opposite. It's like 20 minutes, especially with the, with the speed limit, and then three stop signs in between. I told him, no, 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 it's gonna, it's gonna take you quite a while. I said, no, 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 I'll bring you there. I said, no, 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 just drop me off here. No, it's a tug of war. I said, no, 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 drop me off. No, 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 I said, just shut up. And I said, <laughs> so I shut up. So when she was driving, when she was driving, she told me, no, talk, 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 talk. <laughs> so I shared again. And every time I, I tell her about something, she kept on saying, wow, wow, this is awesome. Wow. So that became like a 15, 20 minute ride. And before she dropped me off, the Lord convicted me to not forget to pray for her. Friends, I stay, I stay in the clubhouse. That is the busiest building in the whole resort. That's where they, they sign in. They, that's where they register. So there's two drop-off points. There's a lot of cars just waiting. So before she dropped me off, I already told her, excuse me, Sarah, Sarah is her name. Before I step off your vehicle, can I offer a word of prayer for you? And she said, that's a first? So I folded my hands and while praying, I was praying. It's like a story yesterday when we approach people, we have to constantly pray while talking to them. So while, while praying, I was praying, Lord, maybe this will be the last and first and last time I'll, I'll ever pray and speak to this woman. May the words that will come out of my mouth will be your words. So it was a short prayer because there's a lot of vehicles waiting. It's like less than 30 second prayer. And when I said the word amen, I saw Sarah folded, hands folded, and head bowed and saying, wow, wow, wow. This has never happened to me before. Yeah, I've been coming in and, this res in and out in this resort for the past 10 years, but this is the first time somebody did this to me. I said, Jem, this is the best vacation of my life. And then she asked me, can I give you a hug? I said, no, of course I said yes. <laughs> Of course I said yes, but just imagine friends, 15 minutes, 20 minutes ago, this lady hesitated to give me a ride. And now she wants a hug. So I gave her a hug and I told her, God bless you, Sarah. And I said, this is one thing that I'll never forget, she said. When I, when I stepped off her vehicle, I saw Sarah, I waved goodbye to Sarah and she went back to her position, wow. And the vehicles behind her, eh, 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 <laughs> said, wow. <laughs> and a few more walls while she drove off. While she was driving off, something hit me. Lord, wow, you rerouted my trip. You canceled an appointment just to reach Sarah. Amen. Just to reach those people. And then I realized there's no worth like complaining. There's no point complaining and hating the situation, hating the pastor, uh, not really hate, just disappointed. And then I realized, friends, that when God is in control, he will be really in control. Amen? And the time that I had there was an awesome time. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with mine eye. That's what he has promised. But most of the time we resist. But most of the time, we don't take that offer. And look at the life we live. It's not a sweet life. It's a sour life. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, friends. It's worth trusting him. Take him at his word and see what he has prepared for you. There's a few more stories that I want to share, but I'll share it tonight. <laughs> so before we end this, this morning's devotional, I'd like us to group ourselves in the groups of three, and let's spend five minutes, and let us ask God that he will make us sensitive to his leading, most especially that the Lord will make us willing for his leading for his voice, for his instruction, and for his guidance. Let us, let us be on our knees.
And let's sing the song, He's So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Just the first stanza. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more.